Web Storage API is used by developers to store some data into the web browser. And this data is nothing but key value pair of strings. Okay, you can say it as a very big object which only contains string. So it is that simple. Now there are two mechanisms to store this data. One mechanism is session storage, the second one is local storage. So uh, when I say we store data in session storage, that means that data is persisted only for that particular session. So what do you mean by session is that suppose a user is visiting a web app and as soon as he visits the web app, a session is started and the data which is stored in that session storage will only be persisted till he is on that web browser window. As soon as he closes the window or the tab of the browser, that data is lost. So that is the session storage, but it is very useful than cookies. Unlike cookies, session storage data is not being sent to the server while making the network request calls. And also uh, this session storage data has a larger capacity to hold. Uh, like in cookies, you can just store some 4000 bytes of data while in session storage minimum or at least you can store 5 MBs of data. That is a lot. If we talk about local storage, it is just same as the session storage. But the advantage over here is that uh, it does not clear itself, like it does not come with an expiry. So even when a user closes the web browser or even if he closes a web browser's tab or even if he shut down his systems and can come back again to the same web browser and visits the same website, that data is still persisted in that browser. So that is the power of local storage. You can keep that data stored for that user in his browser till as long as you want. And if we talk about the memory capacity, local storage has the highest memory capacity when compared to session storage or cookies. And you know what the memory capacity is actually depends on what type of device you are using, what type of browser you are using. It totally depends on that. But yes, local storage, uh, roughly is at least 5 MB for sure if even if you are using a mobile phone. I have seen a lot of big companies using local storage a lot and you know what these companies they store some user specific data into their browsers. So sometimes you know what uh, like if you have some data which is not very relevant to keep it on the server side they just dump it down into the local storage. Sometimes they use it for A-B testing and sometimes you know it can be used for optimizing the performance of the web apps. So, you know, getting the data from the local storage is very much faster than getting the data actually from the network, making a network call and getting the data. So sometimes these, uh, uh, these websites, what they do is they just put down the data into the local storage and fetch it from there instead of just making a network call and uh, optimize the page speed like that. So if you check out the most famous Indian startup, which is Flipkart.com, they store a lot of data into the local storage. If you just go ahead and check out the application tab of your developer console, then you'll find out that some of the information such as the browse products, navigation menu, auto suggest history, all this user specific data is being stored in the local storage there and then itself. And not just the Flipkart. So uh, again, if you can go ahead and check out the local storage for the uh, again another famous Indian startup ptm.com, you will find out that even they store a lot of data in the local storage. So suppose if you are a travel customer on ptm.com, they store your recent search flights and uh, recent cities which you have selected and even some more uh, session storage or session value data into the local storage. So now you must have got the answer to your question, how you can use this local storage in your day to day web apps. Just like these startups are using to keep this data, you can also uh, keep your user specific data into their web browsers if that data is not much relevant or if you are performing some A-B test or if you want to optimize the page speed of your website. So uh, that's how it is done. One more important thing about these storage APIs is that they follow a same origin policy. That is because of the security concerns. So due to security reasons, uh, they just follow a same origin policy. So let me just quickly explain you what the same origin means. So the origin comprises of three things. The first thing is the protocol, which is like the HTTP or HTTPS. The second thing is the host or the domain. Uh, suppose flipkart.com or paytm.com or akshasaini.in and the third thing is the port 
uh, which is 8080 or 8081 wherever your app is hosted so these are the three things which uh, which defines our origin so so when we say that we are setting some data into local storage we are setting this for that particular origin so if we set some local storage data suppose for our origin http access any dot in so where all can we access the data from uh, let's check this so can we access this data from http access any dot in slash uh, data dot php so can we access that yes we can because we are on the same origin that means our protocol our host or our port all remains the same it is just that we are giving it an extra path so we can access this data over here can we access this data on https access any dot in no we cannot access this over here because we are um, we are not on the same origin now because it it is disobeying the protocol so the protocol earlier was http and now it is https so can i access this data on http block dot access any dot in so again the answer is no over here because we are again disobeying the host property now so when you put some subdomain over here uh, the host changes so that means our origin changes that means the local storage for block dot access any dot in is very different than access any dot in so and the third thing is can i access the data on http access any dot in colon 8080 so again the answer is no so when the port changes or the host changes or the protocol changes the origin changes and the local storage for each and every origin is different in the browser so uh, that is what the same origin policy in the storage api refers to hope this is clear let's move on to the third part of the video where i'll actually show you by the code how local storage works and how you can use it so if you go on to the developer console and go on to the application tab you will see under the storage section you have a section of local storage as well so right now as you can see for our http localhost 8080 there is no key value pair set so here you will see the key value pair of the data which you store in your local storage so how do you set that data let's see first of all so uh, i wanted to tell you that local storage is stored on the window object of the browser so window object is the global object if you know it so window dot local storage you can access just because this local storage is on that window object with and you can use this local storage just because it is a browser you can just use it directly like this as well or window dot local storage so if we do local storage dot set item which is a function again present on top of this local storage api so it is an api so this set item takes a key and a value so if you see it takes it is a function which takes a key and a value pair so uh, let's take our key as uh, hello and the value as world so as i said these are these can be two strings and this key value pair of strings will be stored in the local storage so if i hit enter it 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 fires and it returns undefined and it sets this hello world in the key and value in our local storage so here it is similarly we can set some more so if we said ha huh, again if we try to set it again then what happens is it overrides and if we try to set some other key it will go again and uh, will set like this now when we have set something in local storage how do we fetch data outside the local storage so how do we get data from it so there is one more function for it which is get item so in get item there is one argument which you have to pass that is the key so if we want data uh, if we want to check what is stored against hello so we'll see that okay world 2 is stored against hello and uh, that's how it is that's how you access the values from local storage now there is one more important function local storage dot remove item so when we say local local storage dot remove item and we pass in some key maybe suppose hello one and we press enter so it removes our data from uh, local storage this specific key value pair it removes and if we do something like local storage dot clear so it will it will automatically clear everything from local storage so now our local storage is empty 
now when we said so these are all the major functions which we use uh, while accessing local storage but i wanted to tell you one important concept which will help you in your machine coding round of your front end developer interview for that generally we don't store the key value pairs of the strings okay so we generally have some objects which we want to store in our local storage so suppose if we have want to but but there is a problem local storage accepts just strings but we want to store some objects so suppose if we have a object user and we have suppose name and uh, suppose the name is akshay and we want to store this user object inside our local storage so if we try to do i'll show you what problem we face so if we try to store something like set item uh, set item and we try to store our user object like this so it gets stored like this so now if you can you can you see the challenge over here so what problem with did we face is the browser atom when we do subset item this this function over here tries to parse this object into the string so if i do something like string and i'll try to convert this object to a string it will give us object object but do we want to store it like that if we again go and fetch this user item so what we'll get let's check so see we'll get this object object but we wanted our original object right so how do we do that let me clear the console and do that once again so if we want to store our local storage some object into our local storage what we will do instead is we will just user copy and we will store it something like this json dot json dot stringify actually so what we what this will do is this will stringify our object and stores it into our local storage see now you can see we have a user copy where the object is originally stored like an object and when we get the data out of this local storage now we'll get it properly now we will get it properly something like this now again if you see this is a string so generally when we get this data out of local storage we generally want to do something like json dot parse over this so now we got an actual object from the local storage so local storage is very useful but these small things are a little gotchas while you are doing it in your machine coding round so sometimes when you have to use local storage in your machine coding round you will end up facing such problems where these nitty gritty things uh, which can hinder your performance like even one minute even one minute is really very important machine coding round i don't want you to waste that in just doing this string manipulation and transformation so generally what you can do is prepare yourself before the interview as well so how you can prepare is just just create your own function before the interview something like get local storage and set local storage data so create this these functions before in hand local storage data some your own functions which you can use instead of these local storage dot set item and get items and underlying to this just json dot stringify and json dot parse to make the same functionalities what these functions are doing so i am trying to say that try to develop your own small library which which will expose some set to set local storage data and get local storage data and similar functions but you don't have to worry about all these transformation and translations while handling our objects or arrays or uh, maybe functions or any any sort of random code you put in just try to uh, handle those cases in this our local storage data and wherever you want to uh, use this in your code instead use your own functions so that will be helpful and will save you a lot of time while you are doing your machine coding round of interview so i hope this helps and thank you for watching so that was all about the web storage api sets and storage and local storage if you like this video then do give it a thumbs up and also go ahead and check out the other videos in my cracking the front end interview video series that will help you a lot and also don't forget to subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon so that you get notifications for all the upcoming videos and you never miss any update so that's all for now and thanks for watching